Next, we'll have a staff presentation on the Friendly Avenue Neighborhood Conservation Overlay. Mr. Clegg. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening to everyone, Planning Commission and Planning and Zoning Commission members. Uh, my name is Russ Clegg. I manage the Long Range Planning Division in the Planning Department. Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about the West Friendly Avenue Neighborhood Conservation Overlay. Um, tonight, we're asking that the Commission hold a public hearing and make a recommendation to City Council. Uh, that can be either a positive or not positive for adopting the plan, and if it is positive, you can include changes that you recommend to the elements of the, of the overlay. City Council will hold the public hearing and consider adoption. That's tentatively scheduled for the meeting on October 15th. Uh, this process was proposed and brought forward by residents in the area through a petition process. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what a neighborhood conservation overlay, or an NCO, is. Uh, the process for creating one, and then talk specifically about the West Friendly Avenue proposal. So before I get moving, um, the area covered by, the, by this proposed NCO uh, is the properties fronting Friendly Avenue from Holden Road down to Westridge Road. Uh, we sent out over 1,100 letters because of the, the 750-foot buffer that we do for notifications. Um, the pro properties that are included in this are outlined in gold here. There are a few gaps that I'll speak to in a later slide. So, a neighborhood conservation overlay is a zoning tool, and it tailors cer certain dimensional standards based on the existing development pattern in a neighborhood. Uh, in our older neighborhoods, sometimes they were developed through different standards and a different style than the current zoning would allow. So this helps to ensure that when new development occurs, it fits in better with that existing context. And the, recommendations would be tailored to that existing context. Um, as an overlay, it does remain consistent if the base zoning changes. Um, what uh, NCO does not do, it does not regulate the land use, it doesn't change the base zoning. If this is adopted, the properties will remain R3. It does not mean that somebody can't come in and request a change to a different zoning district. Um, if that request is granted, then the particular pieces of the overlay would be what governs those dimensional standards. It also doesn't regulate building interiors or exteriors, uh, painting or reg regular maintenance, um, and it does not prevent demolitions. So, the basic process for creating an NCO is initiated generally through a petition. It can also be created by uh, directions from city council, but generally we see them through a petition process, and that needs to include the signatures from 25% of the property owners that would be in the proposed boundary. Uh, once we receive that in the application, uh, staff looks and makes a determination that the area has some common characteristics that make it cohesive and make sense as, a, as an area covered by one overlay. Um, if that is uh, determined, then we work with the neighborhood to create the standards and the plan that goes with that. At that point, if we're all on board with the same standards, then a second petition process occurs. This one has to be signed by at least 51% of the property owners covered in the overlay. Um, that does not obligate the city to do anything other than hold a public hearing process. It just starts us moving in that direction. Uh, we do stress that that's a minimum requirement and not a target. We know that the more signatures we get on that, the, the better the application is. Um, and then we move into the public hearing process we get recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission and final action by City Council. Um, a couple other things. Um, these really only covers new construction. Uh, it doesn't apply to existing houses or change anything about how, how the existing houses um, are, are viewed in terms of being um, conforming structures. Uh, but if there's new construction, site plans, those types of things, then they would be reviewed under the new um, parts of the overlay. Uh, we also have some language that speaks to replacement in case of fire or accidental damage. If somebody is a little bit nonconforming because of the overlay, they can build back <clears throat> in the original footprint in the case of fire. So the neighborhood in this case, they uh, began speaking with us during the rezoning process and asked questions about the NCO um, and then 
went through the signature process and required the necessary signatures to start the process moving forward last fall. Uh, we did some initial analysis. Um, and then the area that you see outlined in gold here is the area that is covered by the proposed overlay. I mentioned there's a few gaps. Those gaps are either due to the fact that there's city property, there's a couple of parks, there's a fire station, there's a vacant lot, or there are a couple of instances where there are um, cul-de-sacs that have houses with a backs facing friendly or the backs towards friendly avenue, or they have cul-de-sacs with the sides face friendly avenues. The context of those is different, and those were not included in the um, in the overlay area. The zoning in the area is R3. That is a zoning category that covers detached single-family housing of up to three dwelling units per acre. It does allow some other uses, including schools and churches. We did a comparison of the existing dimensional standards for R3, which you see on the left, and some of what we saw when we did a desktop survey of the conditions out in the, in the neighborhood. Um, there's a few differences. The lot widths generally are wider than the allowed 70 or the minimum 75 feet. They are up average 124 feet. Uh, the front setback, the minimum in this district is 35 feet. Uh, front setback average is 92 feet. Uh, side setbacks or rear setback rather uh, is at 10 feet and the average is 24 feet. We also noted that large majority are one story and that most of them face Friendly Avenue. I will say these are averages, uh, and though there is some change on the corridor, it's generally a fairly smooth change as you go to the west. Um, the yards kind of get a little bit bigger and the houses are a little bit farther back, so that's a fairly smooth transition. So having done that analysis, we started our public process. We had a meeting um, with residents in the area in January. Uh, we described to them what a neighborhood conservation overlay is, how it works, um, things it does not do. Uh, we discussed the character-defining elements of that section of Friendly Avenue. Uh, they talked about the tree-lined street, the number of trees in the yards, the generous front setbacks, and the sort of character that creates as you move through the corridor on the street. Um, and we also made sure that we had consensus on moving forward with the process. There was a small group of neighbors that we met with in between these two meetings. Uh, we met again on April 9th with the whole neighborhood and talked about uh, what elements to include and to determine the specifics for those elements, so the, how we would address those items they wanted to address. Um, so those elements include the front setback, the side setback, the height, the orientation, and uh, tree conservation. For front setbacks, the proposed ordinance for vacant uh, will, for a vacant lot will be the average of the two closest developed properties. Um, this is somewhat similar to the contextual infill development or standard that's in the land development ordinance that rather than having a 35 foot number speaks to the average along the, the houses um, to kind of continue that smooth transition. Um, this codifies that and also means that if a different use were to come in, office or multifamily, you still have that same setback. Side setbacks will move from 10 to 20 feet if the lots are larger than 90 feet or wider than 90 feet. Uh, for narrow lots, they would go back to the 10 foot. Uh, we didn't want to create a situation where it was difficult to build on a lot, so the lots are smaller. So in addition to that, front setback, they wanted to make sure there was room to, to build a, a house if somebody wanted to build a new house. Height. Height has been uh, proposed to be reduced from 50 feet to 40 feet. Uh, they do, there was conversation about the number of one-story houses and garages, and they wanted to make sure there was ability to put accessory dwelling units on, on garages if people wanted to, so they said that those structures could be up to 12 feet taller than the principal structure, although not any taller than 40 feet. For orientation, uh, the new NCO states that the principal front building facades will be oriented towards West Friendly Avenue. And finally, tree conservation. Uh, trees are very important to the residents in the area. Um, looking at the pattern of trees, it was clear that most of the trees were in the front section of people's front yards, and that was really created the most impact. So the tree conservation is limited to the 50, first 50 feet from the edge of a curb. Uh, in that area, in cases of new construction, there would be a requirement that 75% of the trees are uh, four inches or larger in diameter be preserved. 
Um, if for some reason that can't be met, then you would be allowed to take down more trees, but then they would be replaced up to that ratio. Uh, and again, this is only for new construction. If you're not, you know, if you're just staying in the same house, you could manage your trees any way that you see fit. Um, so at this point, I'd like to uh, answer any questions that you might have about the proposed NCO. Okay, if I could interject here, what we'd like to do right now is entertain any questions. We'll reserve comments till after the public hearing. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. I'll go. Thank okay. you, Ms. King. Okay, let's start with tree preservation. Mm -hmm. um, it states, the first 50 feet of the front setback measured from the right of way is an area of tree conservation, period. If you look at the south side of Friendly Avenue, the, the majority of those houses are 50 feet is their entire front yard because they sit closer to the street on the south side. So, it talks about in our LDO that tree conservation area is, uh, in, includes existing trees in their critical root zones and the purpose of the tree conservation area is to encourage the preservation of healthy trees that are four inches or greater. Specifically, and I asked Mike about it, he says it only refers to new construction, but that's not what it says here. It says that the first 50, 50 feet is in a tree conservation area. So, how does that affect people that are, it's not new construction, it's existing construction, they want to thin out trees, they want to get rid of the magnolia trees that are dropping leaves everywhere else, and they're in that 50 feet. And sure. it's not new construction. So, the, the, it does say the first 50 feet of front setback are in areas of tree conservation. It then goes on to say in cases of new construction or redevelopment that 75% of the trees need to be uh, preserved according to LDO standards. But it so doesn't say existing. It says in the cases of. That first sentence is defined. The 50 foot of every house in this overlay is well, in, in an area of We can of certainly clarify that language. And the intent is that this does not apply unless there's a permit pool. You know, we wouldn't have anybody checking on any trees I, in the area. If there's a permit pool, that's when this would be applied. I think I read it clearly. It's basically saying the 50 feet is the conservation area. However, in cases of new construction or redevelopment, the only thing that triggers, right, is 75%. At that point, you're required to maintain 75% of trees four inches or larger diameter breast height. I, had, I looked that one up. Yeah, so right. about yeah. four and a half feet tall. Right. I, I told Mary, I went in my yard to find out what about four yeah. inches is. That's about this. Mm -hmm. So like it's, you know, it's not a sapling, but it's also not like, you know, an established tree. Pass it down to anybody that wants to see it. But this is four inches in, in diameter right here. So. I, I still think that it's not clear. I, I and we can certainly work to clarify this, the This only yeah. applies to new construction. Yes. That is correct. Then it needs to say that. It yeah. currently doesn't. We can make that change, yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to keep rolling unless someone keep else... Keep going. You have, okay. you have a list, I know. I do. Nonconformities. Mm -hmm. All right. And it states that, you know, in cases of house burning down, mm -hmm. that you can rebuild in the same footprint. All right, it doesn't address teardowns, and we've got one of those at 4016 West Friendly. It is a lot that is uh, two and a half acres. It's two and a half acres. So sidelines, setbacks, rear line is not a problem. But the house is twice as big, and it doesn't begin to fit in the footprint of what was there. And that's fine. We not we are not saying you have to build back in the same footprint. There's been a concern that if this inadvertently due to some accident, there was a fire, some kind of natural disaster, a tree falls on a house. Um, we don't want to create a situation where somebody has to build back. If their house happens to stick a couple of feet in front of their neighbors, 
and they want to build back exactly where they were, this would allow them to do that. But it does not mean that you can't build a bigger house if you – we understand most people are going to – they tear their house down, they want to get a, build a bigger house. So that would be what this really talks to is if they do build that bigger house, is it in line with the other houses in the area and kind of fit in that context? Well, the answer I got from staff was that – um, the potential would be there that if you wanted to build a house that didn't fit the footprint, you're going to have to go get a variance to build it. That's just additional layering. If there was, for some reason, you wanted to go into that side setback or something like that, of course, you would need to get a variance. But you would, if you if you fit the parameters of the the NCO and the rest of the LDO, of course, then you would be able to build a, a large house that you wanted to. And I would say that's fairly consistent with our non-conforming structures, standards we have in the ordinance generally, that you can stay within that existing footprint, but once you expand beyond that, you're subject to whatever those existing rules are. Whether you agree with those rules or not, that's the way the ordinance generally works with those non-conforming structures. Any additions would have to meet those standards, et cetera, on there. I still feel it's not clear. Yeah, and this, this uses that language about nonconformities and adds. I think that stops at 50 percent. So it kind of expands that to say if your whole house is destroyed, you still can rebuild back on that footprint if, if you would want to, and it's just some tragic accident that caused you to need to. Well, I'm specifically concerned about teardowns because we're going to see a lot more of that sure. based on the, the size of the houses or the age of the houses on the front line. Um, so I... I I'm concerned about hamstringing somebody who buys a house, tears it down, and then wants to, to build something that they're going to have to get. They can go get variances or make some more adjustments, and then they're still going to have to deal with the trees because it would be new construction at that point, and bulldozers and trees don't get along real well. So, <laughs> Right. So they would be able to build as large a house as they could fit into the, the lot if they chose to tear down and build a new house. So. Okay, next question. 3701 West Friendly is the corner of Friendly and Holden. And, yes. and we've dealt with that over the years and different mm -hmm. requests for rezoning. That house sits as a result of Friendly being widened. That house is right up on the right. street. You're not going to rebuild that house right. in that same footprint. Um, and it's uh, 2.7 acres. So and I had asked the question, is this overlay going to restrict future development to the point that we might be considered uh, as a, an illegal taking? This was brought up by an attorney um, and outside of the city. Um, it, it, it bothers me that that particular property happens to be included in the overlay because it's not going to sit like that forever. It's going to be torn down, something different's going to be built. Um, and I realize it would require zoning and that sort of thing, but I'm surprised that that particular property is in there other than to potentially uh, have the neighborhood feels like they would have control over what could be done. Well, I'll say from our perspective that this process is not to stop new development, is to improve allow new development to happen in a way that fits in with the context. So we would hope that the neighbors would be able to express what their main concerns are about a change and be able to say, well, if you build according to the standards, you're more in line with what neighbors are looking from a new project. So we certainly understand at some point that house is probably going to be torn down and turned into something else. Um, but it would hopefully, because of these standards, be more in line with what the neighbors see as um, important to them. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> okay. Again, questions only. Okay. Okay. I've got a couple about um, tree conservation. Quick to remind the commission, we do have speakers, so I don't, I don't want to belabor too much and not listen to the, some of the speakers that are coming up as well. But go ahead, Ms. Ryan. Okay. This will be quick, I promise. Okay, so the tree conservation says that the NCO allows trees to be removed during construction as determined by the planning director, by the planning department director who? 
If it's beyond that 75%, then there would need to be, I mean, you might be able to speak to that. Yeah, I was going to say, the plan director term is a term used in the ordinance generically to talk about planning staff. We actually have a municipal arborist on staff, but they would be the ones through the plan review process that would be trying to evaluate that. So they would be helping determine which trees really did need to be removed and which ones really should stay and work with the developer to figure out how that works. So we have technical expertise on staff. Planning director is the general term the ordinance uses to say planning staff. Okay, perfect. Okay, so about non so so I'm clear about dead trees are not counted in the equation. Okay, it's all of that. So nonconformity. Um, I think I'm clear about that. Except it states that all structures already existing at the adoption of the plan are considered to be conforming with the standards. Right. Correct. So I've, I've got that understood. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. The tree replacement, I understand. Um, the NCO only increases the side setback on lots wider than 90 feet. These lots are increased to 20 feet from the LDO of 10 feet. Did I get that right? Yes, the standard for R3 is 10 feet, and on the wider lots, that would go up to 20 feet. Correct. Okay. The lots that are less than 90 feet must comply with the existing LDO of 10 feet. Correct. Okay. The front setbacks. Okay. This setback is determined by the two existing houses, and you explained that. The front setback for, vacant, for the vacant lot will be an average of the two existing. Okay. I got, I'm clear. Thank you. Thank you. Were there any other questions for now? All right, then we are ready for some speakers for our public hearing. And as discussed in advance, we will allow three minutes per speaker. If you would line up and come to the podium and give your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Nikki Kohut, and I'm battling a cold, so if I start coughing, I apologize. Um, I live in Old Star Mount Forest at 3921 West Friendly Avenue with my husband and three boys. I'm here this evening to express my support of the West Friendly Avenue Neighborhood Conservation Overlay. A Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District is a zoning tool used to preserve, revitalize, protect, and enhance uh, significant older areas within a community beyond what is specified in the land development ordinance. The NCO came together as a request by the neighborhood to preserve the unique elements of the West Friendly Avenue neighborhood, which has drawn families, neighbors, and visitors alike to Greensboro for over half a century. The area defined on the map as the area of properties along the West uh, Friendly Avenue and Holden Road up to Westridge Road has long been established as a center point of multiple historic Greensboro neighborhoods converging. These neighborhoods include Starmount Forest, Hamilton Lakes, and Hamilton Forest, making it an attractive, desirable area for visitors and families alike. With its older homes, the neighborhood has seen a resurgence and young homeowners who desire to revitalize and improve their homes in an established residential setting. The development patterns on West Friendly Avenue amongst the Star Mount, Hamilton Lakes, and Hamilton Forest neighborhoods have changed little since the 1950s and 60s when they were first conceived. Homes in the West Friendly Avenue neighborhood are popular and highly sought after. Many of the homes are spacious ranch styles, classic colonials, and a few Cape Cods from the 1940s and 50s. Where additions to original houses have occurred, most have been to the rear of the house, leaving the view shed from Friendly Avenue intact. Each home has its own unique charm, contributing to the neighborhood's character. As such, we've had great interest and support from the neighbors within the NCO and surrounding neighborhoods 
to see that the area remains as close to its current form as possible, respective to new development. Over the course of the last year, we began the process of submitting a petition to the city for the creation of the NCO. We held several public meetings from January through April to get feedback from the neighborhood, the major issues we wanted to address through the NCO adoption. In those conversations, we learned that what's cherished are the large residential lots with deep setbacks. I'm the only one speaking currently, so I think they're going to give me the time to finish. No, it's three minutes per speaker. Okay. Thank um, you. Anyhow, um, with regards to Mrs. Skeen's earlier question about why Thank you. Um, the property was included on the corner is because it's currently zoned R3. It's been to zoning before, and it was denied rezoning. And we feel like with um, the neighboring uh, homes being R3 on that side of Holden Road, that um, it, it I can turn the, mic the neighborhood off, but the time is up. Thank please. you very much. Thank you. Steve Frey Aldenhoven. I live at 4003 West Friendly Avenue. It's the south side of Friendly Avenue at about the midpoint of the proposed boundaries for the overlay district. What I want to emphasize with you tonight is that this 12-month process was really grounded in the recognition that the property owners have of some of the unique characteristics of these properties and a better understanding of the history that the, that why that came about. So we wanted to be able to protect that and felt like that there was a, um, a reason that made it an effort to take some of those considerations in, in tax. So we want to also um, say that we would have brought, would have liked to have brought this proposal to you uh, beforehand or earlier, but we understood that the process did take time uh, we made sure that we got uh, enough recognition with the property owners over the, the holidays celebrated at the New Year's. We tried not to um, coordinate public meetings during those times, as well as the times in the summer months when people were out of town. So that helped us get a, a broad uh, consensus of our proposals. I wanted to uh, commend staff for the work that they did with us. They were very patient. They answered all of our questions. They helped coordinate the times and the meetings that were most uh, effective for our efforts and um, really took the time to help us prepare the um, proposal that we felt like didn't, wasn't, uh, have a lot of constraints to it. So we'd ask for your support tonight. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John Drinkard. I live at 4020 West Friendly Avenue. I've lived there for 30 years, raised my family there. Uh, we really enjoy where we live, and it's a great place to live. Uh, I'm at, here tonight to ask your support for this uh, zoning uh, district. Uh, what initiated this process, you're probably well aware, was a zoning development, proposed development in our neighborhood that completely ignored our neighborhood and the context that made us unique and what we felt made it special here. Uh, it's been a very long, exhausting battle for us. You probably haven't heard a lot of it. But, you know, while that battle is still ongoing to some degree, what we do want to do is not have to keep going through that over and over again because this is just the first that has come into our neighborhood and it's going to continue to come in right behind us. But we need your help in doing this. And how do we combat this? But primarily, it's not combating it, but give them guidance of how they can better meet and fit into our neighborhood. We're not, be clear, we're not against new development. As a resident, while I've recognized the fact of how development can have negative impacts, I'm also an architect, and I also know how the power and what a new development can do to a surrounding community as long as it enhances complements and works within the exist, existing comp, context of that community. But what we don't have right now is the context for them to go by. And that's what the NCO does, uh, as Russ did a great job. The part of this is, you know, 
zoning was not in place when these, these properties were developed initially. We're trying to provide the initial, you know, kind of a supplement overlay to help define what are those characteristics of this neighborhood that we want to promote and extend so that when developers come in, they respect that. Uh, so we ask for your support in this, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Are there any other others who have something to offer that hasn't been presented or anyone in opposition to this? If you'd come forward, please. Three minutes per speaker. If you'd go ahead and line up at the podium, please. Could give your name and address, please. Art Close, 715 Kemp Road West. Uh, Mr. Engel, diameter is the measurement across the circle, so you need four inches is going to be about this wide. And then the circumference, yours is probably about four inches in circumference. We just want to say they're going to be a little bit bigger trees. Right, diameter is going to be going across it. That one's about a one inch diameter, okay? We're, we're, we didn't want you to think that we're just looking for twigs and we're going to protect every twig, okay? <laughs> Art, you have to understand something. I, if you I just do much my, math for a long I, time. I have, <laughs> I have 52 trees in my front yard. I, okay? You're my and, kind of and guy. And so, yeah, I know. And, and so this, this has been, to me, most of my questions that I ask staff, I ask, you know, everybody that I could find, including a very kind woman named Junie Kaiser that called me, was all about this tree conservation aspect of it because I was trying to understand, you know, just uh, you, you try to empathize, right? You know, what would, what would happen if my house was in this overlay? Right. So what helped me was talking to staff and finding out that, hey, no matter what, if you're not doing any new construction, you know, and... and Maintain and you could, your trees, whatever got, you gotta got to do. I've got two trees right now that I have to take out and I don't want to contact an arborist about it. In fact, to me, that could be unsafe. Right. Right? So so that was where I was at, and I, you know, but keep going. And, and we were actually, when we went through this with the staff, and by the way, Russ, the team, Mike, were really terrific. We got into that part, especially when we were talking about 10-foot versus 20-foot sides, and we did the math and said, look, if you've got 90 feet and you do 20 feet on each side, the house can only be 50 feet wide. This is going to be a little shed, right? So we can't do that. We tried to be extremely reasonable as we went through all this, and the same applied with the trees and the things. We really want to protect the neighborhood, but we also understand that people have property rights, and we want them to have those. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. How are we all? John White, 4601 West Friendly Avenue. So um, I appreciate a lot of the questions that you raised, Mrs. Skinner, um, because these are some of the same questions that I've asked. Um, let me give you a, a little background. I live in probably one of those. There's about 20 lots that are about 0.9 north, and I'm one of those properties. Mr. Draker is one of them as well. And several of my neighbors that actually own the larger properties didn't receive any communication about this. And when I looked into why I did not, I found out through the tax department, y'all had my information incorrect. Okay, so I don't blame these individuals for this. But as a person who does this professionally, I take very seriously outreach. I take it very seriously. So from my standpoint, I did two public open houses for a project I had in a three-mile buffer radius with 4,100 people being notified. I don't mind letting people know about what's going on. Okay, but on this matter right here, my property is not a property you can knock on the door of. I live behind a gate, okay? So I don't fault them for not knocking on my door. What I do fault them on is, is this. What has been raised in this, I did not buy my property in 21 with these kinds of restrictions around, okay? The tree aspect, I have two of the largest trees on Friendly Avenue in my front yard, hands down. I have two of the largest pin oak trees on Friendly Avenue. And ironically, in the presentation the staff prepared, it's actually taking pictures of my block not of the blocks represented by any of the speakers tonight, okay? Now, granted, we're all in the overlay, right? But my biggest concern is, is ultimately, I haven't received any information. When it, this was in opposition of the gentleman that came forward wanting to do the development, 
you could not ride up and down Friendly Avenue, West Ridge, Holden Road, inside Star Mount, Lakewood, so on and so forth, without seeing no rezoning signs. They even updated the signs to let you know when the public hearings were going to be held so that you would show up. And if that's the level of energy you go to to oppose something, then give me the same level of energy when you want me to understand your perspective and view. I don't oppose this, this overlay. I just don't think it's been well communicated and information has really gotten out to the general public that are impacted. All these people who've shown up here tonight, they have full due process related to their democratic rights. But many of these individuals in this audience tonight are not impacted by what's being proposed. Many of the individuals sitting on this front row live on, on, around the corner from me. I know that for a fact. They're not being impacted. They're not one of the 91 properties. So, again, let's get back to the core of who's being impacted and communicate with us as property owners. Okay? Ms. Hocutt and I, we went to high school together. We lived in the same subdivision when we were in high school. We know each other. Okay? And I have had one conversation with her and Art in front of my house related to this. Outside of that, I have received nothing. I called Mr. Clegg, and I called the tax department. He filled in the gaps. Other than that, I don't really have a good sense of how this is going to impact me as a property owner. Thank you. Thank you. What was your address again? I'm sorry. I did not hear your address. 4601 West Friendly Avenue. West Friendly. If there is anyone else who intends to speak, you need to line up, please, or we... Yes. If you give your name and address, please. This is rebutting. Um, this is for rebutting. I think we're just taking speakers, correct? Pardon me? Three minutes per speaker. Three minutes per speaker. To say whatever speaker. they need to. Okay. Yes. Okay. My name is Jenny Kaiser. I live at 201 Erskine Drive West uh, in Greensboro. I live around the corner, about one block away from this area. Um, I started with this process about 18 months ago and have gotten to know all of our neighbors really well. Um, I would like to point out that I understand that some people probably feel that they were not notified in a timely manner, but I'd like to also point out all of the methods that we did use to notify not only about the rezoning that ended last November, but all about the NCO and the NCO process. We had public meetings. Um, that we did publicize, we emailed out to people that opted into our email list. We had a public website um, that was searchable via Google and Yahoo. So if you typed in uh, West Friendly Avenue, preserving West Friendly Avenue, you were brought to the website that consistently had um, when we were having the meetings, when we were having the meetings on the NCO, and when we were asking for feedback. And if you had any feedback, there was a reply form that you could type in and you could say what you liked or what you didn't like about the proposed NCO. So we gave people plenty of opportunities in person um, and also via the, via the web uh, and electronic media um, to give us that feedback. We had a Facebook page. Um, and in addition to that, we actually had a text messaging service that if you needed to know when these meetings were going to be, you could give us your phone number, and we would text you out um, when and where and what the topic was. So I just want to make it clear that um, while people did not um, attend and, and they didn't know about it, it wasn't from lack of effort to make sure that people knew when the meetings were and that we were asking for feedback. Thank you, and I hope you vote yes. there. My name is Candida Yoshikai, and I live outside of the NCO area on Friendly Avenue, 5306 West Friendly Avenue. Um, Could you give your address, please? 5306 West Friendly Avenue. Thank you. You actually granted us a variance to build something that stuck out a little because our house sticks out a little, and you allowed us to do that. You also have approved a medical center across the street from me that is sitting there not developed with four un, uninhabited homes that's waiting to be raised. 
Friendly Avenue is the prettiest street that we have. We really, this NCO is about helping to maintain the prettiest street we have in Greensboro. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. No other speakers. We will, we will close the public hearing and we will allow were you coming to speak? I'm sorry. I didn't think so. Um, we will close the public hearing. We'll allow comments from the commissioners if there are any further comments. Ms. Gaines. I'm back to trees. All right. I just want to make public record. If there's a house on Friendly Avenue that is sold or not sold, and someone wants to clear cut their front yard. They've had one tree too many fall on their house. And it's an existing house. They can clear cut and don't have to ask anybody's permission. Is that correct? That is correct. So, the business of the first 50 feet being an area of pre-consultation, it's only new construction. But it's, that's not what it doesn't say, it's only new construction. Yeah, we'll, obviously, we need to clarify the language, but that'd be intent, is that, yes, as you stated. So, can I suggest that that may be part of a recommendation, if, if one is made then, to clarify the language, to be clear about new construction only? Uh, that's the theme I'm hearing from the comments on there, so I'm just trying to not belabor that point. Well, that's just a couple, because there's been two cul-de-sacs put in on Friendly, Dunkirk and Round and Roundtree. Um, and we didn't have the overlay, and they fit in just fine. Um, I just, I guess what keeps sticking in my mind is one of the emails I received that I think we all received was from a gentleman who said, if I wanted to have a house in a neighborhood with a homeowners association, I would have purchased a house in a neighborhood with a homeowners association. And I didn't. I bought here so that I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted to do with my lot. And that's, that's with the trees, with, with uh, some of the other restrictions that are put in place, I think it. I think it goes too far. We're c closed. Thank you. Thank you. Our our public hearing is closed. Uh, this is for comments from commissioners. So do I have another? Uh, Miss Turner, I have a comment, um, and it really goes beyond the the details because I think that the uh, the provisions are quite restrictive, um, but mainly my concern is that I find it to be inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the 2040 comprehensive plan um, and it's filling in our framework goal. In general, I don't think that it would support the important goals for responsible growth that that plan stands for to me and nor would it provide an example uh, of embracing growth rather than stifling it. Um, and so, and in my opinion further, I think that piecemeal changes to the plan would not, would not cure the deficiencies that I find in terms of it's not being consistent with the 2040 comprehensive plan. Anyone else? Ms. Maggot? Okay, so there is another existing overlay, Westridge. Yes. Correct? That is correct. Okay. And thank you, you sent me that. And I compared it to this. It's very similar, except it's gone to, I don't, when was Westridge done? Uh, oh, I think 2009. No, 2009, so it's been like. Sometime a while, yeah. 
15 or so years ago. So they added the accessory housing part and, and a few updates. Okay. So um, there is an existing overlay. Yes. Similar to this. That is correct. Okay. So, and and the neighborhood outreach of the homes that we're seeing in this picture here, there was a certain percentage of those homes that were that reacted or, or were part of the petition. I don't know what percentage of those homes, you know, the, the, wanted this. The first, well, the requirement is that for the, to begin the process, you need to get petition of 25% of those property owners, which mm -hmm. they did. Um, and then we move through the process. And then the second requirement is that you have a petition of at least 50% of the property owners. And they got that in as the percentage is 75 to 80%. We have, we're verifying a few of the ones that are in trust or, you know, the properties are changing hands in one way, shape, or form, but probably with those included, it's a little over 80%. So. 80%. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? So when I started looking at this, I first thing I do is, you know, what am I doing? Okay. So this is, and Mr. Kirkman, at any point, if I say something false, you can correct me. Okay. All right. This is a, this would have been a function of the old planning board at some point, right? This would have not so much been a zoning thing as much as, the Planning and Zoning Commission now is going to hear this. Is that is that a correct statement? Right. So the adoption of a plan uh, adjustment on a text amendment, those functions went to. Now, we'll say, actually, to be correct, there's a zoning map amendment associated with this. Yes. So that portion would have come that to the, the old Zoning Commission to establish the boundaries of the overlay. So, so when I think about this, I, I have to, I'm considering this differently than I would have six years ago when I joined this commission. Okay. What am I being asked to do? All right. So there's a, there is a mechanism in the LDL to allow for an overlay district. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Affirmative. Correct. That overlay district would require us to look at the things that you mentioned, which is development standards associated with that overlay district, the history, and in keeping with that standard to maintain that. Is that I mean, near as I summarized from what I saw, that's pretty accurate. So then I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay, so you know, you're going to have to forgive me. I've watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with my daughter this weekend. There's that scene in the beginning where everything is in the fine print down below and you really can't read it. I had a lot of questions, much the same as Mrs. Skeens. But he, here's where I kind of come down to it. You're, you're adjusting the setbacks. You're adjusting the building height. Small, in my mind. Still build a two-story house. Still build a house. Still can rezone it, right? So, and still, if you're not redeveloping the land, you can do whatever you want with your vegetation, which was really important to me, as I mentioned. Just in the front yard, 52 trees, right? So I care about that. You know, if I had a large pin oak, and I did have a large pin oak at one point, which I don't ever want those leaves again. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't ever want those leaves again. I would want to be able to do what I needed to do for the health of the tree without having to ask anybody. There's an ice storm coming, whatever. So that's all off the table. I am concerned about 3701, but I'm, I'm, this is where I kind of come down to it. We had 16% of our population turn out in our last municipal election. Did you know that? 16%. You got 90 people, 90 homeowners together, and you've got over 80% of them to agree to this. The standard is 50%, which I would not have agreed to. If y'all are walking in with 50%, I wouldn't be saying this right now. Because I personally, I'm skeptical of this, but I think you've met a standard in my mind that supports it. I couldn't get 80% of the people in my household to agree on much of anything. And, and you've got 80% of the people on this street to agree to this. I mean, that, that's something that I think needs to be taken with a large amount of care from the commission. And so for that reason alone, in addition to the fact that I think the staff has worked and brought something that meets the standard of what I'm being asked to approve tonight, I'll be supporting it. 
And I do want to thank Jenny Kaiser, who talked with me multiple times through several of my questions, and Mr. Kirkman, for that matter, and Luke Carter for answering, and Russ Clegg for answering questions. I, you know, I take the responsibility seriously, and thank goodness this is the last time I get to sit up here with y'all. But the, to me, this this meets it. If there were one I was going to see, this is this is it. You, you had over eighty percent of the people say, "Sure." So, I'll leave it with that. I have a question. For, uh, other, thank you. Any other comments, Mr. Peterson? Yeah, I was, it was clapping for me. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Russ and your Russ and your, I know your staff worked on this quite extensively, and your. Your professional opinion is going to weigh a lot on me. In your professional opinion, do you think this is the best way to preserve the characteristics of this neighborhood on West Frame? I would say based on what I heard people express in the mm -hmm. meeting. Because I wasn't at the meeting. Sure. sure. I mean, this really gets at their major concerns. I've been in other process that says, it's like where people get, you know, there's a lot of little rabbit holes you can go down. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think this speaks to what their main concerns were, which is kind of how, how the road looks when you drive down the street. There's lots of trees, the houses are kind of far away, they don't overwhelm you with the, you know, relative to that vista. So I think I think it addresses those concerns, um, but still allows rezoning and things of that nature. I'll let Mike okay. speak as well. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll concur with Mr. Clegg. The, the, what this is trying to balance is to preserve a certain context without getting as focused on the use of property and some of those issues because that's what's interesting about this tool is that it's at the end of the day the base zoning stays the same and if the base zoning changes those use rights go along with it but they are developed within a certain context that seems to be consistent with the context that's out there now so I would say from that that is the reason we were recommending in favor of this MCA. Um, did you have something else to say Mr. Peterson? Anybody else who hasn't spoken yet? Um, I have to say that I'm inclined to agree with Ms. Turner and Ms. Deans. I, I find some of the requirements in here overwhelmingly restrictive, and yet some of it isn't, doesn't address all the questions that would come up. So the depth and breadth of it isn't sufficient to me, but I don't see the need for the plan. I think that what we do as a planning and zoning commission and the vision that we have and how we deal with those things when they come up um, address quite neatly our vision for growth, which is expressed in our 2040 plan. I think we have a vision, and we know that Greensboro is growing, and we know that we have a requirement to somehow find a way to fill in the empty spaces rather than going for sprawl. And I think it's a challenge for us, and I think that our 2040 plan truly addresses a lot of those needs. I believe that our zoning, um, as it exists, addresses those needs. It's always disconcerting to me. Of course, people want their neighborhoods to stay the way they are. And you don't want to see multifamily next to single family when you're in a single family neighborhood. Yet, we have upon us the requirement that we do measured and, and um, thoughtful growth. And that's what I think the 2040 plan does for us. And so for me, I find that in conflict with what is proposed here, and my vote is with the 2040 plan. So I am not in favor of this as it's proposed. And um, that's my view, and everybody, of course, is entitled to their own. Just, no. Sorry, the public hearing is closed. I'm sorry, sir. There's no dialogue right now. Thank you. Ms. Dean? You, you stated it. You, you and Ms. Turner both stated extremely well that we've got this 2040 plan that encourages infill. And this plan restricts the ability to do that. You've got 4202 West Friendly that's 1.72 acres. 
sitting right there that could be developed into a cul-de-sac. Um, 4,200 West Friendly, 1.72 acres also. You've got 3,701 West Friendly, that's 2.7 acres. All of these can be done or, or could be developed. But it, this is just too, too, too restrictive and it's, I just think it goes beyond the scope of what we're trying to do in Greensboro, encouraging infill. And, and I have lived my entire life within two miles of Friendly Shopping Center. So I, it's not that I don't understand where you're coming from. It's just I'm also feeling that we need to encourage growth and we need to look at options. And I think this plan is is goes beyond what we're trying to do. Yeah. Restricts what we're trying to do. Thank you. Any response to the uh, public concerns? I'm sorry, we'll have to ask you to leave if, if you cannot be quiet. This still goes, excuse me, please. This still goes to City Council. There's still a public hearing with City Council to be had. And what we have before us is a choice to either recommend the plan and take a vote on that, to recommend the plan with changes or to not recommend it. In any case, this still goes to City Council. I would make a motion we recommend the plan. I thank second the motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Engel and Mr. Peterson. We have a motion and a second to recommend this to City Council. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of sending it, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Two, three, four, five. Okay, in favor of sending it to City Council. All those opposed? Five, four. And so this. It does constitute from the Planning and Zoning Commission a favorable recommendation, and it is subject to a public hearing at the Tuesday, October 15th, 2024 City Council meeting. Um, we are at another point where we typically do take a break. It's 9.20. We will break until 9.30. Thank you.